Hello, and Happy New Year. And what a blessing it is for us to be together um, into the Word of God and for us to be doing it together. And so on behalf of all of us here at Calvary Chapel Hammett, we just wish you a Happy New Year and, and a, a year that's full of blessings from the Lord. So before we begin, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come before you and we thank you for another new year. And we know, Lord God, that you already have this year all planned out for us. And so through your grace and your glory, we turn to you and we ask you, Father, that you would give us the strength, that you would give us the guidance and the direction so that we would live out this upcoming year bringing glory and honor and praise to you. We just pray this, Father, in your most precious name. Amen. So as I said, we pray for all of us to have a, a blessed new year and that, that the Lord Jesus Christ would be first and foremost in our hearts and in our lives. So recently, I was given a word uh, from the Lord for me personally in response to an answer of a prayer that I had put out there to him some time ago. And I believe that this word that was given to me was a word from God that also was given to King David so many years ago. So it's a word for all of us as well, because we know that um, God's word never returns to him void. It's promises that is there for all of us throughout all of our lifetime and throughout all of eternity. So that word came from Psalm 118, verse 17. And so a little background in regards to that verse. It was a time in King David's life when, when he was tormented, actually literally tormented. There were all those enemies out there who were seeking to hunt him down like a wild animal. And their sole purpose was to kill him. And so David, as we so often see in the Psalms, he always knew where to go, and that was to his Lord. And so he cries out in the Psalm, I shall not die, but I shall live, and I shall declare the works of the Lord. So of course, you know, we know that David knew that one day he would die, but for the moment, for now, he would live for the purpose of declaring the works of his God. And as I began studying and preparing uh, for this devotional, I found that there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of ways for us to declare the works of our Lord. The Bible is full of them. In, in uh, Psalm 19, verse 1, just one example, the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim the work of his hand. And as I was reading the Gospels and my own personal devotional, it became clear to me that the writers were not just telling us a story, nor were they just giving us historical events in regarding the life of Jesus. No, they were doing much, much more. They were declaring the works of the Lord. That was their glorious ministry. The writers of this gospel did this for us, for us to see all these glorious and wonderful things in regards to our God. And this should be our ministry as well. It should be our focus. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it tells us that we are a chosen people. It tells us that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, we are God's special possession that we may declare the praises of him who called us out of the darkness. What a wonderful resolution that this could be for us as we are entering now into this new year, declaring the works of God. So we can start out by asking ourselves a question. Do we want to show the Lord how grateful and thankful and gracious that we feel for this free gift of salvation, that he paid the ultimate sacrifice for us so that we could be with him 
throughout, throughout all of eternity. I pray that we can all shout a resounding yes, but let's not just say it, let's actually do it. As brothers and sisters in Christ, let's join together and commit to that. Let's declare the works of the Lord. And as our pastor, Pastor Gary often tells us, and then let's go and let's tell them. That's part of our job, that's part of our calling. God has created us to declare his works and also to praise his name. Even the trees, the, excuse me, the leaves of the trees shall clap their hands as we're told in Isaiah 55, verse two, uh, 12. It is one of many reasons why we exist by praising him and by fulfilling our purpose of why we are even here. Have you ever wondered what your ministry might be? I've heard oftentimes many Christians say, well, I'm just waiting to see what God has for me to do for him, for his glory. Well, might I suggest here is one declaring his works. So my friends, join me in that. Make that commitment to be bold, be honest, be truthful, and let's get out there. Let's, let's declare these works of our precious God. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, and I know I myself personally have found so many scriptures that support that wonderful truth about declaring your works, Father. Being bold that um, we bring glory and honor to you, Father, by doing this. We need you, Father, to strengthen us, to guide us, to lead us and direct us through your Holy Spirit. We praise you, Father. We thank you. We give you all the glory. In your most precious name, we pray. Well, my friends, goodbye, God bless, and please make that a commitment of your heart to profess the works of the Lord.